tell us whether you'd like to direct your question to one person or to the whole panel. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, US European Command. Uh, my question is for uh, anyone on the panel. Uh, one of the things that has been observed with uh, the changing politics in Turkey has been the importance of the commercial relationships that they've developed uh, throughout the region and the effect that that's had on politics. And with that in mind, um, in spite of the political estrangement that's been going on, it seems that commercial ties Do you see that as a as a leading factor towards possible improvement in the future, or if it's something that will sour as a result of continued problems uh, politically, or something that will remain unchanged uh, and divested from the changes in the political relationships? Uh, well, <clears throat> first, I think you're you're right that the <clears throat> economic relations have not yet been affected. They probably will be in the strictly security areas of military um, purchases <clears throat> if the relationship doesn't revive. But otherwise, um, commerce has a way of kind of working its way around political obstacles. Um, uh, over time, maybe, maybe a real downturn in Turkish-Iranian relations will affect their economic transactions. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of money to be made, and businessmen are – fairly uh, open-minded about uh, where where and how it can be made. My sense from when I was in Turkey last fall is that even people who don't like the current Turkish government, businessmen, uh, more secular types, were delighted that they had all these opportunities to make money in places like Iran and Saudi Arabia and the Gulf and so forth, and they were just raking it in. So my guess is that as long as the Turkish economy is booming, they're going to be looking for business wherever they can find it and that the politics will, will not necessarily track economic uh, relations. I mean, as you said, economic relations are pretty good still between Israel and Turkey, but political relations are terrible. Please. Do you want to add? Sure. Uh, I think uh, trade has been an important component of Turkish foreign policy, especially with the AKP government. And I think the best example is uh, how uh, uh, the, the t trade relationship, Turkey's trade relationship with the KRG, there, there are almost 400 Turkish companies. And I think that's important for, uh, for regional stability and peace and also for democratization because I think uh, currently, for example, the the Turkish government initiated uh, the Kurdish opening in 2009. Uh, the, uh, Barzani, uh, he supported the Kurdish opening. And one of the main reasons why uh, he backed uh, the AKP's uh, Kurdish policy was because of t Turkish investment in the region. They have the oil, but they don't have the infrastructure. So investment has become an important tool in that sense. And I think... Uh, and, and we read this in the democratization literature. Trade and economic relations are quite uh, important because they make uh, conflict more costly. So in that sense, I think Turkey, uh, Turkey um, is going to be an important player in the democratization process, not because it's a model or not because of its democratization process, but because of its economy as well. Can I just, I'm sorry. Can I, I just, just to add on the question of whether or not that, that the continued I want to really agree, actually, with Bill. On the question of whether continued trade bodes well for broader relations with Israel, um, in the 90s I served as the commercial economic officer in Beirut for two years. And during that period I heard anecdotally from Lebanese businessmen men of this period, this wonderful period sometime in the 80s when the border was open. It was after Israel had occupied South Lebanon and before things got ugly there was an open border period and trade flourished. The trade goes where it can go. That didn't mean anything in terms of Israel-Lebanon ties. It didn't mean anything in terms of the future of South Lebanon. Um, I, this comes back to me again to a great extent to the Middle East peace process and whether or not there is a political context that allows a healthy relationship to build. Military relationships can occur whether or not that exists, but they'll always be under strain. Economic ties can occur as long as they're allowed to occur, but the healthier, broader relationship really does depend on some broader structural problems. Sir? So again, I think I'm going to just uh, to the question. Uh, we've got a lot of complicated reasons for why the Turkey has been relation. But if you're looking at the just a very basic, simple reason that uh, Turkey and other governments feel that Israel has very questions about the Palestinian people and it's also a Turkey case in the area and Turkey is a losing situation. Israel, uh, 
Um, on the first one, I, I don't think it's as cut and dry as that. I think if you look at the relationships that Israel has had around the Arab world and the Muslim world, it is not a, you know, a black or white issue. Um, I do think that ha the existence of a credible peace process makes it much easier for a Muslim state or an Arab state to maintain open, um, relatively healthy ties with Israel. The less there is that cover, the harder it is to have it openly. Um, Turkey has had, relationships, had a relationship with Israel long before there was a public peace process. It was a different flavor of relationship. That is not maybe possible now, but that is as much because of the changes in Turkey um, in terms of more democratic policies, more democratic foreign policy, as it is the changes with the Middle East peace process. Very much similar to what we have with Egypt, where post-Arab Spring, um, diff a different sort of relationship is, is going to be necessary. It's not going to be possible anymore. And on the Greece thing, I, I don't know if it makes it impossible. It certainly is a, a good way of um, poking uh, Turkey from Israel's part. Or, or a bad way. <laughs> right, no, I mean, Turkey, yes. Sure. Um, th there's a, this interesting question on Cyprus, which I don't know the answer to, but I, I wonder if Gonol has uh, some thoughts on how this is going to play out. There's, there is something interesting going on right now that where the northern Cypriot government just called off some military maneuvers because they wanted to continue the talks with the, their Greek counterparts. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on, but if you could clarify how Cyprus fits in, it would be interesting. Uh, I, I think um, Israel is kind of pushing the, the Turkish side on that, and um, alliance with Greece or, or Cyprus is not going to work. Um, and I think it's, Israel is making very difficult for Tur for Turkish government to take the first step. Because as I said, Tur AKP's foreign policy, especially foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis is Israel, is quite um, popular. And no matter how much the Turkish government want to revive the relationship and go back to the 1990s, uh, especially this latest Cyprus issue has made it uh, very difficult for the government to publicly take a step back. Sharon Wiener? I think I've been pretty clear on that one. <laughs> uh, I, 